So as we can see on this slide, we have seen a change in direction from the major US and USSR based aircraft to a much more dynamic and broader uh, air transport market. New players have come into the market, European, Japanese, Brazilian and Chinese of course into the military airlift market in that time. In particular we think that countries introduce airlift aircraft for two main reasons. It is to e expand their capability and technology so that they can build uh, a, a newer uh, upgraded technology for their indigenous market particularly and hopefully sell in the export market thereafter. But also from a military point of view, uh, airlift type of aircraft, so air transport aircraft, are a very useful contributor to coalition forces when they are deployed without having to commit combat forces. So that's a useful extra that uh, countries are attracted to uh, developing these types of aircraft. So some examples of new, relatively new players on the market. In Europe we have the A400M with about 174 sales, so quite uh, quite strong. We have the Brazilian KC390, which is a twin engine uh, uh, homegrown design, which is growing in orders about 60. Um, we then have uh, a slightly uh, lower uh, number from Japan in the C2, which is similar in many respects to these other aircraft. And finally, we have the Y20 from China, which is a huge indigenous market anyway. So they're up in about three or 400 uh, orders just to get started. But they are all homegrown, produced indigenously by those uh, uh, countries or groups. So Europe obviously is uh, the A400 provider rather than just a single country. There have inevitably been uh, challenges with a new type of design of airlifter, but the common features that they all have is that they uh, have a, a high tail, uh, a high wing type of configuration, a large cargo hold, obviously being a transporter for either personnel or for equipment, and they normally have a ramp at the back to enable vehicles and uh, troops to parachute out of the back. And you'll see on this slide that one of the aircraft, KC-390, is putting some parachutists out the back from, uh, uh, from that aircraft while it was uh, in its trials phase. So there's an example there. Inevitably, uh, where you have a blank sheet of paper and you want to build an airlifter, um, taking it from there to actually certifying the aircraft is a very long process. And most aircraft uh, in this type of generation that, that we're talking about today have had inevitable design issues on the way, either structurally or with the avionics. Um, but in particular, engine integration has been uh, a, a key issue. Uh, and I say that because for the Russians, the, 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 the Russian type aircraft and Chinese, their engine design and, and uh, technology is behind other users in the world. So they tend to be uh, uh, less efficient and therefore uh, and often produce less power than their colleagues uh, in, in, in the West. Uh, but even the West has had problems, like broad, broadly stated as, as the West, they have had problems themselves and particularly the A400 has a, had issues with its uh, engine control system, a digital engine control system and the integration of a uh, brand new propeller, very large propeller, eight bladed composite propeller with the engine and the gearbox that goes in between it. So that has created a number of issues there which obviously is critical for the aircraft's success. It, it's worth noting that some of these aircraft are also uh, suited particularly for high-end airlift, so they are large capacity, four-engine, uh, and um, lack perhaps that tactical uh, usage that uh, uh, the, the, if you like, the legacy aircraft like the C-130J, uh, now in service, uh, uh, offers in a tactical sense, so short landing strips, very austere operating circumstances and completely self-contained. And this has led to the uh, RAF in, in the UK extending the life 
of its existing C-130J fleet, uh, uh, whereas it was going to be retired. And the French have bought C-130Js relatively recently to supplement their A400 uh, capacity to enable them to operate in those sort of more difficult circumstances. As we have seen, the existing uh, airlift market is uh, quite congested now and much more diversified. Um, and we need to uh, note also that there are many smaller aircraft and of course the helicopter market that is coming into play at the same time. So the, the effect of this is that in the smaller capacity airlift uh, area, as we can see on this slide, the lines between true airlifters, in other words, fixed wing aircraft, and those like tilt rotors and uh, pure helicopter uh, variants is becoming blurred because engine capability is becoming more powerful. So you can lift a helicopter or you can tilt the rotors more, more easily. So that enables more flexibility and operational, particularly operational flexibility with the, these, these alternatives to the large sort of outsize airlifters. In, in particular, it's worth noting the tilt rotor type of technology, which is led by the V-22 Osprey at the moment uh, in US Marine Corps uh, uh, operation as we speak. Why is that worth mentioning? Because it, it allows aircraft uh, of this nature to have a sensible, usable military payload uh, within it. It allows it to uh, take off and land vertically in in very sort of enclosed circumstances and uh, perhaps most importantly it allows ingress into where the target area is very quickly and much more quickly than helicopters. So taken together this tilt rotor type of technology is proving to be increasingly popular although inevitably the technology that goes with it in terms of keeping the aircraft stable and uh, uh, moving correctly uh, does have some risks attached to it. So. Uh, it, it, like all things, it's uh, not quite as straightforward as it might seem. And finally, it's worth mentioning that there are initiatives like the Future Vertical Lift uh, program uh, in the USA, which is gaining uh, more and more traction to look at uh, helicopter technologies and tilt rotor technologies and taking those forward uh, into, the, into the latter part of this, uh, this decade. And, and the, uh, the rationale for that is that uh, material specifications are getting better. So rotors, for instance, can be now blended and much more uh, uh, aerodynamically uh, uh, sound. So that allows greater rotational speed. And again, engine technology is improving. So you're taken together, you're able to lift more capacity from A to B. So that's very important uh, for, for the future of these types of technologies, notwithstanding tilt rotors and other technologies are out there. One final area of interest is CRR, counter-rotating rotors, uh, which is a bit of a mouthful, but it effectively uh, it, it keeps the aircraft in much greater balance and much more, much quieter inside, and you have no need for a tail rotor if you have counter-rotating main rotors. Um, so that is a very efficient way of flying, but obviously you have a number of moving parts there which a single rotating rotor would not have. So there again is some design risk attached to that.